Welcome to Loop TV. I'm Gene Munster, your host, along with Scott Lynn. And we have a juicy topic today. It's something well outside of my area of expertise. So it's a good thing we got Scott here. The topic is art, investing in art. And uh, Scott is the founder of Masterworks. He's going to tell you a little bit about his platform, which makes art an investable class for everybody. Loop is an investor in Masterworks. So I want to bring in Scott here. First, Scott and I have known each other for a long time. Always been impressed. He's had several startups, but uh, the art concept, I didn't know this about you before we initially invested in Masterworks, but uh, tell us a little bit about your intersection with art. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Gene. So I, uh, you know, I started collecting art when I was, I guess, 19 years old. And and I, I can't remember how long you and I have known each other, but it's it's been, uh, it's, it's been a while. So I, my very first company, I started in high school and we wound up building this popular game on the internet. And at that time, I had made a I didn't know this, by the way. This is great history for me. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I had, I had uh, started that company. I'd made a little bit of money. And I, you know, my mom was, was an amateur artist. who grew up with art books. And I started collecting art at that point in time. And, and the, you know, it doesn't, people don't understand what that was like, I guess, in the mid to late 90s, unless they were, they were in the art market. Um, but it, it was much more of a, a collector's market. You know, there, there were, you had to really love art, I guess, to, to, to be in the market and be buying it. And what changed that or what really expanded the market, to no surprise, was the internet. So the internet gave this, this whole level of new price transparency to the market by essentially publishing public auction records from auction houses, you know, that have been around for literally hundreds of years selling, selling art publicly. And it, and it gave people who otherwise knew nothing about the market access to this massive data set to start analyzing and understanding, you know, does it appreciate? How does it appreciate? Which artists are trading for more money than other artists? So people like me who are very, very data-driven kind of gravitated to those data sets and I think started started diving in. And so just, it's like, just, I think about the housing market, housing sales are public record before really the art world didn't have those public records. Now it's much more accessible. Is that one way to think about it? Yeah, so you, you can go to websites like artnet.com, artprice.com and you can search auction records for, Got it. in some cases over a over hundred years. Like, like most people don't realize this, but Sotheby's, which just recently went, went private, one of the top two auction houses was 275 years old as of last year, right? I so have no tech, idea. Yeah, so in tech, we think about old, old companies as 10 years or 20 years. Now these are companies that have, that have literally been around for hundreds of years. So it's, to me, it's this really fascinating asset class, which is, you know, centuries old, has a big data set, so you can analyze performance on it. Um, but for whatever reason, there's never really been investment products created for it. Scott's too modest to say it, but he's one of the top art collectors in the U.S., which makes for a perfect intersection for his passion along with uh, creating this new market. And you want to take us through your basic insight around Masterworks. Why do this? So I guess if you subscribe to the idea that this asset class is, is a strategic asset class, and I, and I think maybe taking a step back, a strategic asset class to us or to any investor should be one that is uncorrelated uh, to other asset classes, particularly common asset classes. Like Wait, but let me, let me pause there. Why is that so important to have uncorrelated returns? Because in a portfolio, if you, if you construct a portfolio with just one asset class, like if you just only buy public equities, then when public equities go down, your whole portfolio goes down. Right. So ideally you wanna have uncorrelated assets in a portfolio. So one of, the, one of the questions we had, and I think a lot, of, a lot of institutions have had for a number of years is like, art is interesting. We know that, that returns can beat public equities for many, or, or I would even say most segments of the art market, but is it uncorrelated or does it just move in the same fashion as, as public equities? And we, we did our first research project when I started Masterworks with uh, Citigroup on, on correlation to really answer that question. So I think today, three years later, we now know this is an uncorrelated asset class. Um, we know that the majority of the market, if we focus on just the top 100 artists, which constitute 62% of a $68 billion annual market, okay. um, when you say annual market, that's how much art's traded every year? Yeah. Um, out, outperform the S&P. So you have the majority of the market, which is outperforming the S&P. We've shown it's uncorrelated. 
But now the problem is that the only way to invest in it is if you have millions of dollars to buy a painting. Right. So there's, there's that's it's a, which is a big problem, literally and figuratively. So the you know the so it's an asset class that the performance characteristics are great, but you have to have millions of dollars to buy a painting or tens of millions of dollars to buy to build a portfolio. So that's why art's limited to really the top, you know, arguably the top one percent of the top one percent, right? Like it's a it's a very small number of ultra ultra wealthy people mm -hmm. that are purchasing purchasing these paintings and selling these paintings over decades, over centuries. So to us, it feels like an asset class that naturally should be securitized. You and I have talked about this. Like I don't know why that hasn't happened, right? Masterworks mm -hmm. was the very first company to buy a painting, file it as a public offering with the SEC sell shares in a painting. Today, fast forwarding um, to now, we also have trading markets where people are trading shares in paintings. So That's we're- amazing. Yeah, check out the trading platform. It couldn't get any easier. <laughs> you can buy fractional shares in these this blue chip art. It's fun, fun to see it in action. And that I love that insight of making art accessible to the everyday person. And it's this is still an early stage company. You're just a few years into this. and. How many uh, paintings uh, have you had on the platform or do you currently have in the platform? Yeah, I get this question all the time. So I think uh, it changes, but we're, we're doing one painting every seven to 10 days now. I think we're at 30, oh, wow. 34, five, six, seven paintings. So yeah, the cadence is definitely picking up. I think as we look forward to 2021, we're also thinking about how do we how do we launch fun products so people don't necessarily have to pick and choose paintings, but they can invest in oh, nice. uh, individual funds. Um, have you do the heavy lifting around that, but so getting a lot of traction on the buying of it, uh, the, the platform to buy fractional shares is making it easy to do that. And we've had some good news recently, an artist, a recent sale that you had, you held for a year, this Banksy. Uh, I want you to talk about Banksy in a second, uh, uh, as far as the performance metrics, it was sold for a 32% gain. That's after any fees that Masterworks charged. At the same time, the Dow, which we think is probably the best comparable over that period, was up 5%. So nice outperformance there. It's just over a 6x outperformance. It's one painting, so we have to keep it in perspective, but I think it is a, a powerful indicator of what the platform can do. Let's talk about Banksy. I just have learned more about this artist recently. Can you give us one-on-one on Banksy? Yeah, so we think, I guess maybe even just t taking a step back. So when we think about what paintings or what artists we're gonna buy, um, we go through this two-step process. So the very first step is we've collected this large database of proprietary returns in the art market. And when I talk about returns, I really talk about um, understanding what individual paintings were purchased for and then what they were subsequently sold for. And then looking at that across 100,000 different objects and using that for things like index construction or to inform which artists we think have the most momentum. So from all of that data, we basically concluded that there's 40, 45 artists this year that we think have the most momentum and our acquisitions team is therefore focused on buying. I love that, by the way, acquisitions team. I just have this vision <laughs> of these really nerdy people that are looking at art data. Yeah, I mean that's that's what we do. So uh, so out of those forty or forty five people, we've got I think I think we're looking at twelve or thirteen hundred um, individual works right now, and we're buying one or two percent of what we see. So we're being incredibly selective at this point on the quality of investments that we bring to the platform. You know, Banksy's an interesting artist in that he he isn't typical for the art world, right? So he doesn't have um, he doesn't really have a gallery that represents him because he's, he's anonymous, there's not really um, art world infrastructure like institutions. Let me emphasize the him. point you just casually said, he's this famous artist, but he's anonymous. How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, people in the art world actually know who he is. So there's not, oh, okay. you know, we, insiders know who he is, but um, I, I've never met him. I know his name. I've, I've friends, <laughs> friends with him. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but he does so, like these paintings. I, I've, I've read a little bit that he'll go and go on the side of someone's garage at night and paint and all of a sudden their garage overnight becomes famous. Pretty cool. Yeah. So the history, right? The history of a graffiti artist growing, growing up in, in Bristol, I guess, is that you, you have to be anonymous because otherwise you'd be arrested, right? You're doing things that, oh, yeah. that are inher sense. inherently illegal. So he's really come to fame through pop culture. 
so he hasn't you know he hasn't come come to fame by having having mega galleries support him and promote his career so we see this with him we see this with an artist called cause you know maybe there's a couple other artists but we are in in this instagram generation that we live in today we are seeing artists become household brand names without the art world infrastructure supporting them so we think that's we think that's interesting. I mean, we, we still, the, the vast majority of artists under artist lists um, do not necessarily fit, fit that criteria, but we think he's, we think he's a great artist and his market's clearly been moving up since we've been, we've been buying his paintings. 32%. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We, we have another Banksy that we did, we did, which is actually a, a more important painting that, that we still own, which was in his first uh, solo show ever. I believe that's correct. Uh, that that I that I want to say we bought for two million dollars. You know, and feel good about where that where that painting is as well. So, yeah, if he's. If you want to see it, you can just Google Banksy Mona Lisa Bazooka. That is, you didn't you heard me correctly, <laughs> Banksy Mona Lisa Bazooka, and you'll get a chance to see it. I'm again, don't know anything about art, but this was pretty entertaining to look at. And it's rewarding to be a part of what you're doing at Masterworks. At Loop, we invest in out of consensus transformative companies. I mean, this is wheelhouse, what Masterworks is doing. Art as an investable class for the masses is an out of consensus idea. Somebody's going to do it. And Masterworks is doing it. It is powerful to see what you're building. We'd love to do another Loop episode with some other paintings, blue chip artists. And we appreciate the time today, Scott. And on behalf of Scott and Gene and Banksy, wherever you are out there, this is Loop TV and bye for now.